Hi, welcome to So Who's Kids. I'm super excited that you are here. If this is your first time, uh, I, thanks for being here. We're glad you're here. We take God's big ideas and we look at them throughout his story in a linear fashion, which means we started from the beginning and we go all the way to the end of God's word, which is the Bible. So we're going to break that down today. I hope you guys are excited. And if you want to see more, we've got a bunch of videos back that way. You can go check them out. Today, uh, we're going to do a lesson on Joshua and I'm super excited. But before we get started, I want to ask you about your parents, okay? All your parents carry one thing around with them, right? At all times. Do you know what it is? It's their phone, right? Your parents probably have their phone with them all the time. Maybe some of them play on it too much, or they're on Facebook too much, but we won't talk about it, right? Sometimes they're on their phones, sometimes they have it in their back pockets, it's with them wherever they go, in their purse, in their pockets, or whatever. You know, a, a phone is with your parents at all times. Now, why am I talking about a phone? Well, because we have another person that's with us at all times. And unlike a phone, this person never leaves and never gets lost. Have you guessed who that person is? Yeah, it's God. God is that person. You see, God is with us at all times. And unlike a phone that can get lost or broken or stolen or whatever, uh, God never does. God is always there. And even if we uh, move away from him, even if we uh, run away or even if we try and hide, or no matter what, God is there for us. And today we get to break that down in our lesson in Joshua, okay? So we've been talking about the Israelites and they've been wandering around in the desert for 40 years now. Remember, they first tried to go into the promised land and they didn't try that God could do it. And so they ended up getting um, a consequence for that, and their consequence was having to wander around for 40 years until the next generation of Israelites were ready to go in. At this point, Moses had also died. And we've been talking about Moses for quite a bit. He was the leaders of the Israel uh, out of Egypt. They moved out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses. He freed them from slavery, led them through all of these things, um, and finally that great leader had passed away. And it was Joshua's turn to inherit his role. You see, Joshua had been working under Moses for quite a minute, and he was inheriting that role, which, I don't know about you, but seems really, really scary. Can you imagine having to fill a role like that? That'd be like having to fill the role of the president. Like, that's crazy, and that's gotta be so hard. But God gives Joshua some encouragement. So we're gonna be in Joshua chapter one, and it says that God calls Joshua, and he says this. Joshua 1 tells us that God called him and said, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for I, the Lord your God, will be with you wherever you go. Whoa. Isn't that awesome? God is going to be with us wherever he goes. Wherever we go, God is there with us. That means if we go to school, God's there. When we go home, God's there. To a friend's house, God's there. Wherever it is, God is there with us. How amazing is that? In fact, when we let Jesus into our lives, God is there in our hearts. We accept him into our hearts, and he is here with us. I um, mean, he is working in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. You see, God is always here with us. Now, the point of the story tells us a lot of different things. You see, we really get to see that God is with us at all times, and he can help us through big, scary things, right? Like I said, Joshua was going through a really big, scary time because he had to lead all of Israel. Terrifying. But we go through the same things, right? We go through times in our lives that are really hard or really scary, really difficult or challenging or whatever it is, and we have to rely on something. Now, sometimes we want to do other things besides trust God, right? Maybe we just want to try and forget about it, right? Maybe we'll watch a YouTube video or play video games or watch TV and try and forget that we're going through a hard time. Um, maybe we're really angry or frustrated and we say things we don't really mean and we're not quite sure why. Sometimes the hard times come out in our words. Um, maybe we're acting different. Maybe we're just choosing other things to do. But when we turn to God and we trust him, he will provide a way out. I want to give an example of my own life. You see, guys, I am the 456 pastor. I teach 4th, 5th, and 6th grade, but I want you to know that a lot of the times I'm relying on God to do that because this is a big and scary task, especially when I first started and I wasn't sure what I was doing. I had to trust that God knew what was best for me, 
right? And so I trusted God and trusted that he would help me through all of that. And well, here I am now, almost two years later, and I get to love on a bunch of you guys. I get to make these videos every week. And I continue to trust God because without him, I promise you, I wouldn't have made it. I might have quit and gone and cho chosen another job, but with God on my side, I knew that I could do whatever I needed to because he would provide for me. So no matter what's going on in your life, guys, remember that God will always provide for you. Always trust him. Always lean on him. And have some friends and family that can help you do that when you're struggling. Some of my best friends help me when I'm struggling and I get to talk about the things I'm going through. So remember that God is always on your side and you can always trust him him. Now, if you guys want to see the story in some more detail, you can check out the video after this. It's going to be the Bible story broken down a little bit more. And if not, I'm going to see you guys next week for our next episode. Bye. God's people were near the land of Canaan. This was the promised land, the place God said Abraham's descendants would one day live. The Israelites had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The older generation had died. Moses, their leader, had died too. And now it was time for the remaining people to go into the land. God chose Joshua to be the new leader of Israel. It was a big job, but God encouraged Joshua. He promised to give Joshua success in the land. God said, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you, just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. Then God said, be strong and courageous. God wanted Joshua to lead the people into the land because he had promised it to his people. God said, be strong and very courageous to obey everything Moses taught you. Study. Remember and obey the commands written in the book of instruction. If you do this, you will be successful in whatever you do. God encouraged Joshua again. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for I, the Lord your God, will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua sent a message throughout the Israelites camp. Get ready. We are going to cross the Jordan River and take this land. God is giving it to us, just like he promised. The Israelites agreed and got ready. We will do everything you have commanded us, they told Joshua. We will go everywhere you send us. We will obey you like we obeyed Moses. We trust that God will be with you like he was with Moses. God encouraged Joshua and promised to be with him as he led the Israelites into the Promised Land, where they would be victorious and find rest. We have victory over sin and rest for our souls in Jesus, who is always with us and leads us into the Promised Land of God's Kingdom.